No, the game is slipping away. Please. This is... For any of you curious of, like, what I'm complaining about... Oh, I want the game to be better or whatever. This game, this match specifically, is exactly what I'm looking for. Oh my goodness, it's so fun. Look at the score. Look at the number of ships alive. Look at the timer. Oh, it's beautiful. As you can tell from my reactions partway through this match, I'm about to have a lot of fun while playing the Klauswitz today. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes World of Warships so fun for me a little bit later in the video. To start with, though, we do want to talk about the Klauswitz just a little bit. This supercruiser in the German line gets a little overlooked, I think, thanks to its rather poor stats. On paper, this ship does not look very good at all. Hardly an improvement over Hindenburg. In fact, a bit of a regression from Hindenburg on, I think it's HE or AP DPM. One of them is actually a little bit worse than the Hindenburg. But what really makes this ship special is the little bit of extra range, which helps you take reload mod a lot more, and just the overall tankiness of this ship. And you're going to see that throughout this match. We just don't die. The ship just kind of refuses to die, which allows you to play the older Hindenburg playstyle, back when there was much less 30 mil overmatch in the game. And Hindenburg really could run around the map feeling a little more like a battleship with a very, very fast reload. Bauswitz really does fill that role these days in the super ships kind of tier. Not always, but it is very, very nice to have this extra armor. The range is also great for farming battleships. The HE is part of the gimmick here, given that we have quarter pen. So we actually pen more than 50 millimeters of armor, which means... If we don't hit Yamato turrets or its middle deck portion, uh, we actually re do really well against a lot of battleships. A lot of full pens, Schlieffen, for example, Kerfurst, for example, lots of 50 mil plating that we then can just really punch right through. And that's what I really like about the Klauswitz. I can play it almost anywhere on the map and not feel like I'm going to get bullied away from a strong position. I'm able to apply a lot of damage in where it's needed most and not actually take a ton of damage in return even if i do get caught out a little bit a schlieffen pushing mid like this we're gonna try and pop his damage control because that is a very important thing to do against a schlieffen pushing and then try and light some more fires on him as he's gonna get into the a cap our team is definitely falling away from the a cap side of things and the enemy team actually controls bc already so we're starting a little bit down um, but it's not too bad. Nothing that we can't uh, come back from. We'll give up just a little bit of ground. We don't want to be within Schlieffen secondary range. We just hope to get a permanent fire now that we know the Schlieffen's used his damage control. So the Klauswitz, in my opinion, is a pretty good super ship to go after. And if you're interested in that Hindenburg playstyle or the older Hindenburg playstyle, if you played back in the day several years ago, you might actually find yourself really enjoying the Klauswitz. But, oh, very, very good. We finally get one fire. We do manage to follow up and get a permanent fire on him. Now we're just going to turn and push back in. Our Kerr first is pushing probably too aggressively, but we're going to use that opportunity as a distraction to actually get some damage in here on the Amato. But now that we've talked a little bit about the ship that I'm playing, let's discuss what makes World of Warships good. And at least start with a bit of balance. I think the best thing about World of Warships can be, or at least is required, to have some sort of balance. The game can't feel like it's over in the first 10 minutes, I would say. Given that we're already 7 to 8 minutes into this match, and most of the ships on the board are still alive, and the points haven't really swung too hard in either team's favor, it's a really, really good start to the game. And I think Wargaming could do well to actually promote this a lot more. Have the games actually be slower. As weird as that can sound in this day and age of shorter and shorter attention spans, I do think this game is much, much better when the games last longer. And that really comes down to a sense of your decision-making matters. How you play the game matters. And that's really the important part here. For me personally, I find this game at its most exciting and most interesting when my decisions matter. I don't want a match to be decided in the first 5-10 minutes of the game, and really whatever I'm doing doesn't matter. It's going to be a blowout win or a blowout loss anyway. I don't really enjoy either one of those, to be honest with you. Even a win. A blowout win, I find extremely boring. And that might sound a little funny, but I have been playing this game a lot over the last several years. 
Uh, since 2015, really, is when I started, and yeah, winning is not really the end goal for me anymore. I want to enjoy the process of the game. I want to enjoy making a decision, reacting to the enemy team, or even outplaying someone over a longer period of time. I think that's the one interesting thing about World of Warships that a lot of other PvP games don't do these days, is your decisions really have ramifications for several minutes. And a lot of what you're doing really impacts the game minutes down the road. And a lot of other games are not like that. It's very reactionary, Twitch-based. And those are definitely fun as well. But one of the strengths of World of Warships really is its ability to reward or punish you based on decisions you made several minutes ago. And then learning from that is uh, a very fun experience if you're interested in learning a admittedly pretty difficult game, especially at the higher tiers. There's a lot to remember, and there's a lot that can uh, deal with you very, very easily these days. I'm not talking about subs or carriers for a reason. I think the balance of the game is pretty solid when it comes to surface ships, but anything else kind of throws that out of whack. But for me personally, if we can just focus on surface ships, I really, really enjoy these long games where my decision-making matters. It affects the outcome of the flank, the battle, and whether it's a win or a loss, at least I know that I was playing a video game. I felt like I was actually participating. That's really what it comes down to for me. So this game in particular is starting to feel pretty good for me. We're 10 minutes in already. We've done a decent amount of damage, although that doesn't matter as much as the following 10 minutes are going to be for me. This is where the game starts to get really fun, these last 10 minutes of the match. We gotta deal with a sub. The best way to dodge them is to be running away. Kiting away just is an easier way to deal with the torps. Run at about a 20 degree angle to the torpedoes, and then when they're about to get to that range where they stop homing, slow down and turn away from them. That is what I've found to be most consistent for dodging torpedoes. Uh, I can do it almost every time when I'm running away and I know where the torps are coming from, which is not always guaranteed, let's be honest with it here, but uh, pushing into a sub is just suicide. I find that I can dodge maybe one set and then they reload so quickly, I can't actually get up to speed quick enough to actually dodge the next set. So yeah, just run away is my advice, which is not fun. Uh, I don't think that's a very good game design at all. But let's focus on the positives here because this is a very, very fun game. Our team is now taking control of the C cap and the B cap, and really the enemy team is pushed way into their spawn. Our team is kind of chasing into the spawn, which is not really advisable, at least for me. Uh, but hey, as long as we hang on to where we're at, uh, we'll do all right. Unfortunately, our new Strashimi decides to push into the Annapolis's radar, even though the Annapolis was spotted there. So I don't know about that, but hey, it happened. We have an opportunity here to kill the Benham. Unfortunately, I just overlead that first salvo, and then our second salvo, well, we only hit three out of 12 shells. Yeah, pretty unlucky there. So those two things, well, they're gonna matter a little bit later. As for the Annapolis coming around this corner, we're probably dead. Um, Annapolis can just destroy us at these ranges. And there's even an enemy Hindenburg at 12 kilometers helping him out. So even though Klauswitz is pretty tanky, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take some pain here. I was expecting to end up dying here. I'll be honest with you. Look at that, 8,000 damage, even though we're angled from that armor piercing. The key here is to stay disciplined. We know we can beat an Annapolis at longer ranges. We just need to get there. And the other thing we need to do is maintain angling. That's really where the discipline comes in. With the Annapolis constantly shooting AP, you cannot miss angle because those 7,000 damage hits, sure, he hit our superstructure and did a really nice salvo there, but that's not going to happen very often. But it will happen very regularly if you give too much broadside. And too much broadside against an Annapolis really looks like I can shoot all of my guns, including my front or rear guns, depending on if I'm pushing or kiting away. So you'll notice I'm staying disciplined, not giving that angle up to the Annapolis all the while using my rudder just enough to dodge the Hindenburg's incoming salvos. And now that the Annapolis has swapped over to HE, now we can start to think about using our front guns. Although I would still like to get a little bit further away and continue dodging the Hindenburg. It's really important when you're dodging like this, in Klausitz or anything really, 
move your rudder just enough that your ship starts to go in a different direction that will get people to lead like you're full turning or even gonna go straight in that direction. Maybe bait like you're gonna get your front turrets off at someone and then instantly turn back. And that's how I've been able to dodge most of the Hindenburg salvos and then focus all our attention on that Annapolis. We even dodge his final burst, which feels pretty good. We saved our damage control for that final fire. We go undetected, and now we're able to use our remaining heals to heal up. So Klauswitz does pretty well there, but I did want to focus on the very specific things that I was doing in this situation, where I think I probably could have died very easily to that Annapolis, but we managed to make it out alive. And now the game, well, it's almost over, but we have almost equal teams, and the points are almost equal as well. The enemy team is just flipping the B cap right now, and there's an opportunity for either team to win this. And this is the beautiful part. The feeling that your decisions all throughout the game have come down to this, where you can win the game for your team, or help win the game for your team, or you can lose it. Uh, we do get lucky that the Ohio doesn't sit at all us there. I'll be honest with you, did not expect him to pop up there. But given how battleships are at longer ranges, and when people are turning out, there's a lot of aim bugs with that, I wasn't too surprised that we didn't get citadeled, uh, just based on some of that battleship experience that I do have. We're going to try and finish this Ohio off, who's actually using HE against us. And we're going to kite away still. It's really important we live. That's the other element to these really late game battles that I enjoy. Every point matters from the cap zones all throughout the game, and... Your ship individually contains about a 50 to 80 point swing, um, both positive for the enemy team or negative for your team. So it's very important to stay alive, even if you're a low HP ship. But we still need to get some damage in on this Hindenburg and especially in on that Ohio. It's so intense. I really feel engaged when I'm playing a match like this. That's why I reacted so positively. Um, in that clip at the beginning of this video. I really enjoy games like this where I've felt like I've played pretty well and that my decisions have mattered over the course of the battle. That is the best part of World of Warships for me. And here, we are on the back foot. I think if a few different things had broken our way, just a few little things, we might have actually been able to uh, pull this one back. Um, we will manage to get the Ohio, but we do run out of range on the Hindenburg. Um, I did just run out of our spotter plane. And then we had one DD left on low HP, who wasn't, understandably wasn't able to deal with the Benham. And the Benham remaining on 4,000 HP. If we had had a few better salvos into him earlier, maybe he wouldn't have been able to go across and cap the whole thing for his team. But he did, and he managed to gain that points advantage. So now we need to push in and try and deal with this enemy team. I also believe the sub detonated our Hanover earlier, which, you know, not not the best <laughs> when it comes to trying to win the game, when uh, I think our Hanover was very healthy too as well. But a loss is still fun for me when I have this level of engagement, when I feel like my decisions have played a role in this match. And who knows, maybe if I had been able to support my DDs a little bit better, or if I had been able to stay a little closer to these cap zones, flip them a little bit sooner, then maybe we would have actually pulled this game out. But 30 seconds remaining, and it is going to be the enemy team that comes out with the win on this one. But three ships alive on our team, two ships alive on the enemy team, and the points within 100-ish of each other, does not happen often these days. So I really had to enjoy this one, and I really did. So I had to share it with you guys today. So I hope you guys enjoyed looking at this one. Um, let me know what you really enjoy about World of Warships. What kind of games would you like to see more of? Personally, this is about perfect for me. Outside of the sub and the carrier stuff in this game, but if we could have surface ships with games like this all the time, oh my goodness, I would have so, so, so much fun. As for the commander here on the Klauswitz, I'm running Luchens, of course. I find him the most effective on the German line because main battery loader is so powerful, probably the most powerful skill on this captain, and it's pretty easy to activate on the cruiser lines. Whereas the secondary one, pretty difficult to activate this talent these days given how passive things tend to be. 
And as for destroyers, it's also very good, but I just personally enjoy the cruisers a little bit more than the DDs these days, at least in the German line. So I'm running Concealment, even running top grade Gunner, going for Survivability Expert, of course, trying to tank as much as we can. Superintendent does get us to five heals, a bit of a special perk for the German cruisers. You do get one extra heal, which can help you out when uh, things get tough in the late game like that. Not always gonna happen, but in a fun match like that that does go to the end, it can be very useful. Grease the gears, of course. Gun feeder is also very, very nice on a ship that does want to use AP and HE, although in this one, I did tend to use mostly HE. Since the armor piercing isn't great at longer ranges and the HE is just a little bit more consistent. Equipment wise, we're definitely running reload mod because of that extra range we get over Hindenburg makes it a little bit easier to use re uh, reload mod. Concealment, of course, propulsion, always nice to have, and then aiming systems, pretty standard stuff other than that. Uh, but there you go. That's what I like about World of Warships, games exactly like that. As for what Wargaming could do to promote matches like that, I think a few keys are just the speed of the game. I think they've sped the game up a little bit too much. The spotting is too quick, especially when it comes to carriers. And I think the damage output at long range is a little bit too accurate and too good. So those things combined mean you're spotted earlier, meaning it's harder to get into good positions. Obviously carriers prevent you from using any sort of islands. Therefore, you're gonna be camping your spawn, which kind of sucks. But the other thing is the accurate damage at range. Super ships, of course, is a very big problem here. And I get that I'm playing a super ship in this one, I know, um, but that damage is so good at range these days that people are just dying quicker because they're spotted sooner before they can get to any sort of cover, which they can't really even use against carriers. And the damage output from some of these surface ships these days is so good at range, people are dying quicker, leading to more blowouts. At least that's kind of how I see it. So I don't know if Wargaming could really change that very easily. Really what it comes down to is uh, remove carriers, remove subs and make more of these super ships that are a little bit less range focused, maybe even taking super ships out altogether, adjusting a bunch of top tier stuff to make it a more shorter range game. I don't know. It's very, very drastic, I think. <laughs> I think that's a lot of stuff that would have to happen. But overall, I would love to see the game go in a more slow direction in a weird way. Um, I want the games to last like 20 minutes like this one did, or at least 15. Don't let me know the outcome of the game in the first five to 10 minutes. I want to be engaged in the match for longer than that and feel like my decisions matter. So that's what it comes down to at the end of the day for me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.